everybody. All right, it's time. Hero versus Bjorn, the team kill of the night. Making me sad. Valdez, I hate when we have team kills. Yeah, especially between two players that could potentially go like round of 16 or even round of eight, especially this guy. We're getting to look at Hero first. This guy has won many tournaments. He's become second in a lot of other tournaments as well. Um, most famously, that $100,000 IEM tournament. Winner takes all that SOS became dollar sign o dollar sign over. Hero did get second place in that. Look at all those Usuns, man. Yeah. For those of you guys who can't read Korean, that means he won that tournament, man. Yeah. And the the only one but the only one of those that's not either a finals or not either he either got first or second is when he got to the round of four, which is one game away from the finals in Stockholm this year. So this guy is one of the best players in the world. Definitely one of the top pro losses. I feel like sometimes he has some trouble uh, with his consistency. He's always had some trouble in individual leagues, and spe especially in the GSL. Uh, individual leagues are different from weekend tournaments because you have a lot more time to prepare for your opponents, and your opponents have a lot more time to prepare for you. This guy, Byung, is teammate. Not only does he know his style, but he practices all the time, but there's tons of VODs from all those tournaments for how he plays on the on the fly, you know, on these yeah. weekend tournaments, because that's the tournament where you're not even sure you're going to play against, and you just beat people back to back to back. It's almost like you're sitting down and you're playing ladder, except in the tournament there's money on the line. Um, yeah. So this is a totally different scenario. Well, Byung's got a lot of results of his own. Not quite as impressive as Hero. You know, Hero is kind of the number one player on CJ Antis, I guess you can say, at the moment. He has been for a while now. But uh, Byung, he's consistently made it to Code S, even getting to the round of 16 one time, and he made it to the round of eight there at the Hot Six Cup as well. Yeah. Uh, this guy has been a pretty solid Terran out here in Korea. He's been kind of overshadowed uh, by Hero uh, on, in terms of uh, CJ Antis players, but... Um, Still a very good player. Just to be able to consistently be in Code S four seasons in a row uh, is not a bad achievement. Uh, and what's not shown actually on screen there is he got a great new haircut. Uh, so <laughs> well, technically not, it was shown on screen. It's not shown on the CG. For you guys CG. paying attention. Um, but in December 2014, he got a haircut. It looked good. So yeah. Nimbus, the band pick here for Hero. However, Byung chooses Foxtrot Labs. Uh, you were actually able to witness this live. Yeah. Um, Kind of a weird pick on the Foxtrot, but it's probably just stylistic because Byung knows Hero's style so well. Uh, not only from the VODs, but more so because they practice together all the time in the same house. Yeah. It's also technically like the two-player map with the longest rush distance, so maybe something in that is mixed into that pick. But regardless, after that, we do have Catalina as the first map. Going to be pretty good there for Byung. Then we go into Deadwing, pretty good for Hero. And then back to Overgrowth, merry go round and King Sable Station as set five. Byung does play a really similar TVP style to Innovation. Just likes to put on a lot of pressure. Uh, not heavy on the drop style so much, more so just kind of like putting on pressure, focusing on his macro and ground-based pressure, like Maru as well. You know, just attacking yeah. via ground, not doing big commitments to drops, not really playing like Polt does, for example. So, map number one, as you mentioned, a great map for Byung. He's going to be pretty happy with Catalina. There's a shot of Hero. Now, Hero having a loss against Deer in Pro League. A different matchup, but definitely looking a little bit shaky these days. Let's see if he can turn things around today. We're going to find out right now. We're jumping into this. No delays. Let's go into map one. Down here in the bottom right in the red, the Protoss player. He's pretty famous out here. He is Hero. Pretty famous back at home for you guys, too, no doubt. This oh, of guy course. Is Not just good. over here. He's famous here on Earth, I mean. Oh, yeah. Actually, probably famous on Jupiter. That's how good he is. <laughs> over here at the 9 o'clock, it's Byung. One of these other CJ players. We got three CJ players in a row here, in fact. Yeah, pretty cool. Now, Hero, I think you did mention this. Um... Did go down in Pro League. Did not look so well. He looked pretty nervous, actually. And, of course, that is a, a different um, setup compared to just the individual league we got here for SSL. You know, it's in that situation more so like his team is relying on him to do well and everybody's watching him. Pro League's definitely got a lot more pressure uh, than just playing for yourself here in the round of 32. 
And um, Hero, he was definitely confident in the interview about this. He was like, oh, sorry, Byung, I'm going to kick you out once again. But uh, I, I would expect you'll be a lot less nervous in this game, at least. Well, gas first. We've been seeing this a lot on this map. Yeah, we have. We've been seeing a lot out of turns as well. Just in general, we've see, seen a lot out of Maru as well as Innovation. Wanting yeah. to just put on that aggressive play. Let's wait and see, like, after Pro League uh, next week. We don't know how many TPs we're going to have just yet, but I feel like after Pro League, if we see more than half the time this gas first build, because we've already seen that this week, this might actually be the new standard opening. Like, it used to be Reaper openings were the standard, and now it's actually becoming that a drop off one base is actually standard, which is kind of crazy to imagine because for a while these builds seemed gimmicky. Uh, they seemed like, you know, they could only work sometimes. TY was arguably doing it too much uh, for a while. Proxying at the same time, you know. Yeah, but now it's like, it's the standard. And I feel like the reason why we see this so much is because the map pool has evolved a little bit better. And people have kind of figured out how to do this better on all the maps. Uh, and do the follow-up, and people figured out the, the TY tanks. You know, you can actually get those afterwards to hold off counterattacks, because that was one of the weaknesses of the build for a while. Uh, I like this build a lot the more it gets used, because it's basically always going to do damage. If their robo is not rushed, then they're going to have to pull probes. They might lose some mining time. And if the if the robo is out super early, then you're feeling great, because the robo is out super early, and they're not going to pressure you with anything early on, and you're going to be able to hold your natural just fine and tech up. So Yeah. I also like this build against Hero. Like we were saying before, he can get a bit nervous. And if you get into his head very early on, you do something that requires a lot of micro in game number one. Just a lot of game sense as well. You can definitely get into his head and start, you know, to roll the series in your advantage. So I, I do like this build choice out of Byung. Will deny the scout here. Don't believe he was even able to see if a uh, CC was coming down. Yeah, that's that's the only mystery here because with the two Marines, he knows, of course, no Reapers coming, so he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Um, but yeah, I think he's got a pretty good idea that this is going to be a drop now, but he's not sure. Because, like you said, he couldn't see if there was a CC. Not able to get up that far. Mm -hmm. Only one gas here, of course, with this build. And... He actually only made one Widow Mine, so I think it's going to be two Hellions and a Widow Mine. We've seen this variation quite a bit. And a Stargate is the tech of choice here for heroes, so going to be a bit lacking on detection, but he might be able to shut down future drops with a Phoenix. Yeah, going to have to see what he does go with here first. I would assume possibly Oracle. Just send it straight to the base, try to do some damage as you are expanding. Keep the Terran back in his base, defending. And uh, like you were saying, if he does go Phoenix, it could definitely help out against the draws, but I'm not sure if he's going to go for that. Here we go. We got the Widowmine and two Hellions picked up here, and the Marines are walking over. This is the standard build for this. Is this probe actually going to scout this? It actually sees it. Does he see it himself, though? That is the question. Well, with those Marines, he definitely is going to be starting to get a bit suspicious. I think he's got to know. He even pulls his probes prematurely here. That's actually pretty intense. This is two Hellions in this drop. And all those probes stacked up here. This could do a lot of damage. There's the Widow Mine. Good pull here by Hero. And actually, that did not go very well at all. But this bunker is pretty intense with all the Marines he's got down here. That could finish. It could do a lot for him. But if he targets the SCB, he should be fine here. And in fact, with this good micro, might even be able to kill all the Marines before the bunker finishes. So that uh, even if the bunker finishes, it just doesn't simply matter at all. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. Widowmine goes down wow. without a hitch, and Hero <laughs> wrecked this build, man. He was like, LOL, no thank you. I think he's seen this a lot of times. The second he saw those Marines coming across, he's like, okay, this is the timing. I know exactly what build it is. And he pulls his probes. He gets back in the main. He, he pulls his Stalker back as well. His Stalker's back as well. He defends it perfectly. He and, killed uh, two probes. That's it. That's not enough to warrant this. I'm no, not it's not. It. And he actually loses both of his Hellions here, trying to do some extra damage, so... One more probe went down there. So three probes killed in total. The fourth probe that you see on that tab is from the scouting probe that died to the Marines. So, I mean, this is uh, not a lot of damage. Now he's got to sit back in here and deal with the Oracles. Hero's not going to fly that in, and he's not going to make a, a gym mistake right here. He's just going to go in and micro this a really gym well. mistake. <laughs> No gym micro here. And two oracles. You can easily snipe down these two mules. Yep. Oh. 
Well, he killed an SCV, and Mule lost a lot of mining time anyways. And Mule mining time is... Losing Mule mining time is worse than losing SCV mining time, because that's eventually just going to time out and die, of course. Now the Oracle's looking to come back in here. Oh, they're oh, going to fly oh. right over that. And one of them will go down. The other one does take some damage here as well. He gymmed it, man. <laughs> so that's going to be known as for me from now on. Oh, man. <laughs> Poor Jim. Oh, would not recommend that series from yesterday. So, <laughs> Twilight Council coming up. Yeah, and if you look at Worker Count already, the Nexus was so far ahead of the CC, he's able to Chrono Boost those out really, really well here. Delaying the mule mining time as well, killing one of the mules. Hero is just getting very far ahead with this. He's adding a ton of gates, as well as getting the Twilight Council and the Robo Bay here. So he is just powering up hugely here. Well, good pull here on this. Oh, 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 it scared me oh, for man. a second there. He pulled away right away, then just baited it out with that one probe. Another one of mine with this drop too. This is actually pretty cool. I like that Byung just throws a Widowmine in here because most players would stop doing Widowmine drops at this point. That hurts to lose the whole medevac, but it's like a Marine drop that you have to take more seriously just because it has one Widowmine in it. That probe should get sniped here and then he gets away. That was a nice little drop there. I'm forcing the Nexus cannon. I'm going to see a little drop over here. Some Zealots coming through. Just trying to put the pressure back on the Byung, you know. This is where the Terrans really want to get in the Protoss' head, try to do a lot of damage. But here is flipping the tables here. He's actually going to try to do some damage himself. There's nothing here to defend. Yep. And he knows that uh, Byung is more focused on his attacks right now, so he might be able to surprise him. Both of these drops shut down pretty hard, and oh my goodness, already seven SCV kills. It was a Warp Prism, or rather a Widowmine there, but it's not enough to kill the Warp Prism. He's actually got so many Zealots that he's even going to take a few of these army units with him on his way out. Yeah, he four more, more, more in. And they're still doing damage there, and now he can drop here at the natural as the units are defending in the main. Oh, if he actually could bait that Widowmine. Oh my god. If he baits the Widowmine into those SCVs too, that could be disastrous. Look at how many SCVs he's killing. He's warping in more oh. units here. Does get hit by the Widowmine. Yep. But Byung is having so much trouble defending against this, it's only no, zealots. I don't know if I would even describe this as having trouble. I would describe this as he's dying to warp prism harass. So he might actually die. Yeah. Like actually, hero can start trouble, warping man. and stalkers. <laughs> can actually start warping and stalkers, <laughs> and end the game potentially. There are a total of four marines on the map, Valdez. He can just walk across the map with whatever he's got. He can't even make units. He can't even make units. They're dying to the zealots. Oh my god. Every marine that's popping out is dying. He's like. Yeah, he's just he's just walking across the map. He knows he's got this. This is what happens when that drop does no damage. Yeah, and look at this. He's got so many gates for the follow-up. He's even adding two more. Doesn't even need it. He's got Colossi in this mix. Even Phoenix is for the add. He's got the <laughs> Oracle here for the detection as well. And oh man, when Byung sees this, he is just going to GG out right away. Yeah, keep a close eye on his face too when it happens, man. This has not been a good game. <laughs> GG. Hero, man. Boy, is he sorry. He said it before, but this guy is just super strong. The defense of the drop was the first key thing. It got zero damage done. Yeah, that very Young rarely. actually took more damage than he did. That very rarely ever happens where that drop does no damage. It's like the opposite of what I said. I'm like, well, the drop is going to do some damage no matter what. No, not in this case. No. And when it does no damage, you have very few units. He also, very important to note, lost that medevac full of Marines. If that went home, yeah. that would have made the drop defense a lot easier.